Crazy Will here today. Today we're going to be talking about how to use Prusa Slicer. Stay tuned, I'm going to show you the basics. Hey, Crazy Will here from Crazy Will's Tech Show. Today, I'm going to show you guys how to use Prusa Slicer. So this is a beginner's, absolute beginner's tutorial on how to use Prusa Slicer. Personally, I was a big fan of Ultra Maker Cura. If you guys are familiar with Cura, and I've done quite a few tutorials, which you can see right here, for beginners for Cura. I've been playing around with Prusa Slicer for a little over three months. I just started dabbling in it, and then when I got the M1 Mac, and you can see that video here of what 3D software actually works with the Mac, Cura hasn't made a Mac M1 version yet. So I started using Prusa Slicer a lot more. I've learned a lot of cool tricks and how to use it, and I thought I'd do a basic tutorial for people that are trying trying to break in, either A, they're in the scenario where I am, or B, they just want to try another different type of slicing software to see if they could get better results. It is very interesting. There's a lot of similarities, and then there's a lot of differences, and some of the differences are pretty big, which I'll show you. So let's get over to the computer, and let me show you how Prusa Slicer works. All right, so here we are on the desktop. The first thing we're going to do is go to your browser and type in Prusa. 3d.com. We're going to click on software, Prusa Slicer, and you pick the operating system that you want to go with. I'm going to download the Mac version because that's what I have. I'm going to hit allow. All right, so once that's done downloading, we're going to open up our downloads file. We're going to open up for the Mac. I'm going to skip that because I don't need to scan it. We're just going to click and drag this into your applications. You see it's uploading right there. Let that go through its process. Okay, so once that's done, all we're gonna do is click into this and then click onto Prusa Slicer and it should open up the welcome window. And for some reason, Apple likes to do this. I guess they wanna make sure that it's a good program. It's good at security, we're just gonna hit open. You got the welcome message from Prusa. We're gonna hit next. You pick the printer that is yours. If it's not a Prusa printer, you're in luck because we don't have to click on this. We'll turn that off. We'll click next, next, and then it goes to other vendors. And then you, you see all the different vendors you have here. Mine is a Creality Ender 3. We're gonna hit next. Creality Ender 3, there we go. Hit next. You can customize it. I wouldn't bother doing that because you got to put a whole bunch of other information and it doesn't load the settings correctly. I don't know why. Used to be that you'd have to go and pick a Prusa model and then you'd have to pick an Ender model. Otherwise, you can get any features at all, but they finally fixed that and you could just click Ender 3. So we're going to hit next. Get all this. Next. Check for updates. Next. I don't bother with this, so we're gonna hit next. And you can pick simple mode, advanced mode, or expert mode. You don't have to pick this right now. Pick it actually in the program. We're gonna keep it on simple just for you guys for now. If you wanna use inches, you can. I'm an American, I use inches, but I switched over because I do 3D printing. I switched over to millimeters because it, it tends to be what everybody kind of goes with and uses. So, you know, if you're outside of America, you're probably laughing at me right now, but if you're in America, you understand we use inches. So we're gonna go ahead and click finish. All right, so really cool. You get your Ender 3 little dragon logo there. Just to learn how to navigate in here, what we're gonna do is if you left click and drag around, it spins and orbits the area, the, the plate. Right click, you pan side to side. You can move around. If you use the scroll wheel, you can zoom in and zoom out. Real quick, we're gonna go through some of the options that we have over here. We have printer settings. Okay, this is pretty much your layer height. So are you gonna do 0 0.8, 2.0 millimeters, normal. That's what I usually print on, but if you wanna do more detail, you could do that. Now, it used to be that you'd have to load the Prusa settings in here, and this was one of the problems that you would have if you did a printer outside of Prusa. You'd have to load the printer first and then put in your printer so you could get these settings. And they have fixed that since then, so which is great. So automatically you just put in Ender 3 and it automatically comes up. Then you get to pick a filament here. So you could do generic PLA. And if we click on this cog right here, it'll bring us in here and it'll show us what the temperature is. And this is all working great for me. I love 210 and I love 60, so we don't have to change any of that. So we don't have to add a filament. But let's say, for example, if you haven't seen my video, I did a wood filament. That one was 220. I don't know other layers, it should, it should automatically be the same, but I don't know why they do that. But I'm gonna put 220. I'm gonna change the color, so we can have like a woodish tone. 
Just exit out of it. There's no other way to do it. Damn it is correct. The cost was 22 and the spool was 100 grams. I changed this setting. It's been modified. It shows modified. And if we don't save this, you lose it. It just goes back to its original. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to save this and I am going to change it to wood PLA. Doesn't like that. Okay, you got to make sure it doesn't have spaces. That's where I went wrong. So wood PLA. Click OK. And now that'll save it as wood PLA. But now if we go back to, if we go to platter, now we have the wood PLA. So now if I bring something in, let me show you how to bring something in. Let me do that real quick. All right, so there's our Superman. And if we click on him and you go over here, so you can move him with this tool right here. You can scale him with this tool right here. So we can scale him. Yeah, all together if you go the outer box. Command Z. And you have your scales over here. Let's do 200 just so we can see them. All right, so we had the scale, we have the position, now the rotation. If you move it here for some reason, it doesn't update over here. It goes to size, I don't know why. But if you go right here, you get an arrow. Shows you which way which. So this one I'm gonna do 90 degrees. Little quirks in the program that I've noticed that I'm like, what, 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 why, why can't I do it over here? But anyway, and then this is the flat if you want to place it on a flat surface. I never used that. I never used it in Cura. And then this is the cut tool, which I haven't had to use yet. Oh, you can cut it in half. Oh, that's pretty nifty. They have a nice slicing tool. Wow, I haven't used that yet, but that's pretty awesome just to show you guys. Command Z that. Okay, so let's say we were going to... 3D print this Superman at this size. So now we have our filament. You pick your printer, which we only have one printer in there. If you have multiple printers, you can change it. You can change your resolution as I showed you. But now we need to talk about supports. So if we wanna add supports, you could add supports from the build plate only. Okay, we'll do that. Okay, so now if we hit slice right here, let it do its thing. There you go, it made supports from the build plate to Superman. And it's still loading. This is where it's interesting. You could see your information right here. So you can actually see each piece as it's being built, like kind of get an overview of how this is being printed and what you need to fix to get it to work correctly. Now I could see, if you look at all the blue, that's all the unsupported area. Now we could probably get away with it with his eyes, but his chin, I don't think we'll be able to get away with. So we could do supports everywhere and hit slice. And now it builds supports everywhere. Very, very, very messy. Too much, way too much, way too much. I love this little panel. It tells you so much information, you know, how much supports are gonna take, 24%, how long it would take to print a day and two hours and 36 minutes. And then I was upset because I didn't see the price here. It was really annoying. I was like, where's the price? Where's the price? The price is over here. It actually tells you all the information you need here, how much filament it's gonna take, what your cost is actually gonna be, which is $4.74 sense which is a giant print that's why it's taking so much now another thing that we could do before I go into the sports anymore is you could change the infill from zero to a hundred percent infill and you could add a brim right here too now when you're in this view if you're familiar with cure you have the same layer drawing technique as you do in Cura. You just click and drag this up and down. So if we go in here and then if we click this one over here we can actually see how it's going to draw it. So it draws all that in I mean, so you have that that view so you can get an idea, you know, what layer you're on, how it's working. So really nice, you could still examine this. But the supports are too much. This is too much. This would be probably a disaster print if you had to take all that stuff off. So to fix this up, we're going to go into printer settings. We only have so many different selections here, which we can go to support material right here. What we're going to do is we're going to go over to this tab right here and go to expert. And now when we're in expert mode, and this is why I said it, it doesn't matter, it just shows you more options and I didn't want you guys getting confused. All right, so let's put this down to 10, threshold 10. Let's see if that'll get rid of some of that overhang. We'll hit slice again. And now we get a little bit less of supports, which some areas I think could be better. So let's try it at 20. Yeah, 10% was a little bit better. So, I mean, this probably wouldn't print horribly. It's better than what it was before, but there is a better way than this. And I'm gonna show you another way. Let's go to the other option, supports for interfaces only. So now we're in simple mode right now. So we're gonna go into expert mode right here and you just click on this and you notice the screen changes. 
This is called Paint on Supports. And I wanna show you this because I think it's really important. You wanna be able to add supports and they have this in Cure. I think it's called Add Supports or uh, Blocking, but this is in Prusa and this is what it would do. So let's say, you know, areas that I think we're gonna have problems. This arm right here, you know, it's, it's floating out in the middle of nowhere. So we'll, let's go ahead and we'll paint this blue. Go in here and just paint all along here. This this is probably all going to be blue. You know, we want supports in here. So we'll paint this. And I'm doing a sloppy job. You could do more of a detailed job. But I'm going to paint this all in here. And I'll paint this over here because I think this needs some supports. So we'll paint all that, right? So wherever I paint, it'll put a support. You can change the size of the brush so we can make it bigger or smaller. I haven't really had to, have to change that. But if you do mess up, you can remove all selected. And it'll get rid of everything. So... We'll just go in here, giving you an idea, and you know, a little bit under his chin there. Let's say, you know, this is what we were trying to print, okay? Now when we hit slice, you can see it adds those supports right where I want them. That makes this very powerful. So now, wherever I painted, that's where it's gonna put supports in. So I don't have to have his face all covered up like it was before. I can only have it where I painted it. So you can really detail it. And you know, you can see, I, I almost got it. I probably should have put supports back there, but it could build off of this. That's just a quick look at supports. If you wanna get out of this view again, you just click on here, 3D view. We'll go back to 3D view. Up here, you have print settings. This is where you're gonna get all your different settings that you want to change. You got your filament settings. I showed you that when we changed the filament. And then you have printer settings. Anything that you're looking for, like if you click on this, it has a really great searching tool. So like, let's say you want wipe, it'll bring up everything to wipe. And then when you click on it, like let's say it's position tower wipe, if I click on it, I love this. It gives you a little arrow. It brings you to where it needs to be. So if you need to find certain things, as long as you learn the terminology, you can make changes to your printer. And All right, so let's say we're done with Superman. I went with regular supports, 15% infill. Actually, let's change that to 10. And we'll add a brim just to show you guys the brim. And I'm gonna go ahead and slice this. So Okay, so like I said, showed you before, you have this, how much time it's gonna take, how much money. Now we wanna export this. We see everything's great. We just hit export G-code. You can save it to download, you can save whatever you want. And I do love the way this labels it because not only does it give you the time at the end, it tells you Superman bust, what, pretty much what nozzle, PLA, and then time. And then you can just save that to your desktop and that's it. And then you transfer that over to your printer, either using OctoPrint or just put it on the SD card and just go ahead and print. And it does a really good job. So that's how Prusa Slicer works. It's a really powerful piece of software. I'm really glad that I took the time out to really learn it because there are significant differences between Cura and Prusa Slicer. And the biggest one for me, I mean, there's a lot of little things, but the biggest one that I've noticed was the painting of the supports. I really enjoy painting on to my model to put supports on there and I find that in some cases it's a lot easier to support objects in Prusa than it is in Cura but they both have their talents and they both have their places and I'm gonna continue to play with both of them and try to learn them inside and out we'll see what the future holds so I always like proof of concept guys here's this print of Superman that I was showing you in the tutorial printed out I actually did go ahead and use Prusa's pre-made supports because when I was putting my regular supports in, it wasn't working out as well because there was a bottom piece here that has a hole and I didn't accommodate for that hole and I wasn't paying attention and I just finally just said, you know what, I'm gonna let Prusa do this. And even though all those pieces were around his face, it still turned out really, really, really good. I mean, look at that cake. Love the way that came out. Make sure you check out next week's video where I show you how to make thumbnails for your OctoPrint using Prusa Slicer. If you guys are interested in that and you're using OctoPrint, and if you don't know what OctoPrint is, take a look at this video right here. Really cool trick. It shows you the thumbnails, and I'll show you how to do that. That's next week's video. That's it for me, guys. Make sure you like and subscribe if this helped you in any way. And ring that bell if you want to get notified when you see more of my videos. And remember, you can do anything if you put your mind to it. Later, guys. I do have a print going on in the background, and I apologize if it does get distracting. I thought it would be done by now, and it's not. It's over. That's it, guys. I mean, there's other videos up there. Or if you want to do me a huge favor, click the like button or subscribe button's even better. 